what's up Loyola and welcome to the special edition of the cover three it's the Loyola Greyhound edition now we all know the Loyola Greyhounds are in the NCAA tournament right now we'll be squaring off against Ohio State on Thursday night so guys let's get right into topic number one and it's no other than Loyola versus Ohio State Mike it's gonna be a an ex very tough game there's no doubt about it we have to deal with Jared Solinger and Aaron Kraft tough defensive guard but, Mike, what would be the keys to victory for Loyola to actually pull this upset off? Well, when you interviewed Jimmy Patsos in the sixth man, he said, we have to guard the three-point line and stop them from hitting their threes. And that is the key of the game. And you also have to keep Aaron Kraft out of the lane, like Jimmy also said. You're not going to stop Sullinger. Um, you're not going to stop Kraft. And you're not going to stop Buford, who I think is Ohio State's most important player because there's been time this year when Sullinger hasn't played well and Buford's uh, gotten them off the hook plenty of times, scoring 30 points a game too a few times. <coughs> but I think if Loyola guards a three-point line and Shane Walker is able to take Sullinger away from the basket and Bobby Olsen is able to hit threes, we, we have a very good shot. And Drummond also has a huge yep. game too. Yeah, I agree with you completely. I think that the main factor in this game is neutralizing Buford. He can't get off because if he does, you know, the Hounds, it, he, he can give – Loyola more trouble than I think Sullinger yes. can just because of his ability to shoot off the dribble, go to the basket, and just spot up for three. The other thing is I think they have to make Kraft into a score. He can't just get in the lane and then find Sullinger and find Buford. Make him a score, take him out of, out of his comfort zone, and force him left. I mean, he doesn't like to dribble with his left hand. He doesn't like to go all the way to the basket with him. I would force him left. I would get in his face and see if he can handle it. That's a very good point, point Brendan. I think my keys to victory are I think we have to keep – Jared Sollinger off the offensive glass. We know they're going to be getting rebounds, but if you can keep them off the offensive glass, limit their second tw uh, point opportunities, I think that'll be a tremendous help. And also, I think we need to be the team that gets out there in transition and, bo and find yep. Bobby Olsen at the three instead of them. If we can get out there in transition, run the floor a little bit, head north and south, and keep them off balance, I think that will be our best chance of capitalizing on our victory. I think if we're the aggressor and we throw the first punch, we got a good shot at winning this game. Well, that's game. what happens in a tournament when the underdogs play well right. in the first half. Teams like Ohio State, they start to choke. So right. we'll see. Hopefully we, hopefully we hit shots. And like yep. you said, we're, in, we're playing in transition. Yeah, we right. definitely had the size to match up with them. You know, Shane, Jordan Latham, they could definitely handle the big man down there. And Eric's been having an unbelievable season. Dylan mm -hmm. Cormier. And if Justin Drummond can score the ball, Bobby Olsen. You know, Greyhounds, we're all here. We're rooting for you. And we believe in you 100%. So go take care of business on Thursday. And we'll see you back here next week, even when you take care of business on the weekend, too. All right, guys, let's hop into topic number two, and let's talk, let's discuss the first round of the tournament a little bit. Mike, who is your most, what is your most intriguing matchup for the first round? There's actually quite a few in the first round, but I don't have to go with Xavier versus Notre Dame. Notre Dame all year has defied the odds. Um, they don't have a lot of talent, and they've done very well hustling and beating teams that have a lot more talent than them. And this game, again, Xavier has a lot more talent than Notre Dame. And, you know, Xavier got into the brawl since the beginning of the mm -hmm. year, and ever since then, they've come together as a team. They won their conference tournament, and now they're in the tournament. And I actually look for Xavier to beat Notre Dame. I'll say uh, Cincinnati-Texas. I think that this is a game of kind of contrasting styles. Cincinnati is very balanced. They have four guys in double-figure scoring. Big man Yancey Gates down low. Whereas Texas is kind of a one-man show with Jacobin Brown. They, two, they play two different styles. And like you said with Xavier, their effects of the brawl. Since he's really been on a roll since then, they played well in the Big East tournament. And I think it's just an interesting matchup because, you know, Cincinnati – They've been up and down. Texas has been hot. They've been up and down. So you don't really know what you're going to get from either team. My uh, intriguing matchup is going to be Vanderbilt and Harvard. We know Vanderbilt has been struggling in the tournament in the first round for the past three or four years now. They've exited. And uh, Harvard, you know, they were ranked in the top 25 almost all year. They won their uh, the Ivy League tournament. And I feel like they're a really strong team. They play smart. There's no doubt about that. And like I said, Vanderbilt has struggled. And I think there's definitely a chance for upset. But, you know, a lot of these 5 12 games are just as good as, you know, an 8 9 game as far as I'm concerned. Mike? Harvard, uh, Harvard has players, too, that are not typical Ivy League players. A lot of these kids that Tommy Amaker recruited could have gone to big time programs. So Harvard is a very dangerous team. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, guys, now we talked about our most intriguing matchup. Who is on upset alert, Mike? I would have to say the winner of Cal and USF in the playing game against Temple. Cal could score the ball. They hit threes. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. And USF is one of the best defensive teams in the country. And they both play in, in bigger conferences than Temple. And it's also a 12-5 matchup again, like we said. So I look for Temple to be on upset alert uh, for the winner of California against UCF. I'm going to say the 14 seed Belmont over the number three seed Georgetown Hoyas. Belmont's a team. They average over 80 points a game. They shoot the ball very well from the field. They share the ball. 
you know, they get up and down. Georgetown likes to slow you down. Georgetown's been up and down this year. Belmont's coming in red hot. They won their conference tournament. They've only, they opened the season, they lost to Duke by one. So they've played big time teams. I don't think that they'll be scared of the moment. I think they'll come out and they'll pull the upset. Yeah, my upset alert is going to be BYU slash Iona. They have a playing game tonight, which I think is going to be a great game in itself against um, Marquette. Marquette, they came out a little shaky in the Big East tournament. I wasn't crazy about the way they play. I know they have a great team, but we know BYU has Davies. He's returned. The player who was suspended last year is a great player. And we know what Iona is all about from the MAC. Scott Machado mm -hmm. leads the nation in assists. They have the big guy, Michael Glover, down low. So I think it's going to be a very interesting matchup. And I think that they have the chance to pull an upset on Marquette, most definitely. Guys, let's hop right into topic number three. Mike, your predicted Final Four, and it, it's set in stone from here. I'm chalking it all up at one seeds. <laughs> I think the four number one seeds are more talented than any team in the country, especially when you're thinking about UNC, Syracuse, and Kentucky. I know Syracuse just lost Fab Mello, which is huge, but I'm going to chalk it all up. I think the number one seeds are just that much better than every team in this field. And Michigan State is huge down low. And don't forget Tom Izzo. Guys, teams always made it to the Final Four. But if I was Kentucky in the second round, I'd be worried about playing Connecticut because Connecticut, arguably one of the most talented teams yep. in the country. Right. They have two lottery picks, two top five picks in Drummond very well with, and Lamb. Match well. up very well. And they didn't have Calhoun for 12 games this year. Right. So if I was Kentucky, I'd be a little bit worried about playing Connecticut. It's probably the hardest second round matchup in this entire yeah, tournament. Yeah, and Connecticut has definitely played well in the Big East tournament. And, you know, they definitely gave a couple of teams a fight there. Brendan, who's your final four? Well, my final four, I have Florida State, North Carolina, Baylor, and Mizzou. Those two games, it's going to be Florida State and North Carolina. That's a rematch of the ACC championship game. Baylor, Mizzou, that's a rematch of the Big 12 championship game. I just think that teams like Mizzou who get up and down, they play four guard style. You know, people say, well, you know, they don't have the size, but they beat you with their quickness. You know, they they beat teams all year with it. I think it's going to continue. They're red hot going in the tourney. I think they're going to make a run. I'm going to go with... Kentucky, I initially had Louisville, but Mike, you swayed me. Michigan State, Tom Izzo, you know, Draymond Green, they're going to be too strong. I think I think Michigan State's going to come out. And I have Florida State coming out of the East region because, like you said, Fab Mello's not there for Syracuse, and obviously the Greyhounds are going to take down number two seed Ohio State. So right. that just leads number three seed to Florida State there, and they just won the ACC tournament. So I think they're going to stay hot, and I think they're going to see a rematch against UNC, the ACC championship. And I think that that's going to be my fourth team, and UNC is my fourth team there. But guys, just give me your champion, you know, your, your, your championship matchup and your final champion. I'm going to go with a rematch from the beginning of the year, UNC versus Kentucky. I'm going to have UNC winning the entire thing. I think UNC, their starting five is, the, is the, the best in the country. They have three lottery picks on their team. Their front line with Harrison Barnes, Benson, I mean Henson mm -hmm. and Zeller is the best in the country. I'm going to have them winning in a rematch. I just think that when they want to play defense, and the way they score, they're the best team in the country. Yeah, I'm going to say, I think that UNC is going to beat FSU. I mean, I know FSU just beat them in the AC Championship, and they absolutely smacked Carolina in the regular season in Tallahassee. But I just think that with what you said, with Henson, Barnes, Zeller, in the, in the big moment on the big stage in New Orleans, I think that they'll take it from Florida State. And I think the Mizzou, for the fourth time this year, will beat Baylor. Baylor plays little to no defense on neutral floor or in a road setting. When Baylor's been on the road against Mizzou, Mizzou's beat them by 15 both times. This will be another neutral floor setting. I think Mizzou will beat them. And then I think that UNC will beat Mizzou for the national championship. I'm going to go with UNC and Kentucky. I think those teams are just loaded with too much talent for the rest of the, you know, the, the league to, to play with. You know, they, they're going to be some good games, most definitely. You know, Kentucky, Michigan State would be a great game. UNC, any other team would be a great game. But I think those teams are just loaded with talent. Like you said, Mike, there's probably six lottery picks on, combined on those two teams. And I'm going to go with Kentucky. I think Terrence Jones returning from last year definitely helps out Kentucky. They have Gilchrist. You know, they have good guard play. I think Kentucky and, uh, obviously, the big man, Anthony Davis, down low. So I think Kentucky's going to pull it out. I think Cal Perry's going to get his first championship with the uh, Wildcats. But it's definitely going to be a very good tournament. Like you said, there's, there are those four or five elite teams, but everybody else is kind of right behind them. You know, in, in the tournament, the year has been very interesting. So, you know, guys? It's one of the deepest fields I think that I've seen in a long, yep. in a long time going through this bracket. It is, has been one of the harder brackets I've had to fill out. And I would just say that it's going to be interesting to see if Anthony Davis gets in foul trouble, how does Kentucky respond? Because both games that they've lost this year to Vanderbilt the other day for the SEC Championship, and to Indiana earlier in the year, he was in foul trouble. They lost both games. How does that affect them if he is in foul trouble in this tournament? My thing is, too, UNC only is seven deep. 
and Henson has to be on the court, yep. I think, for them to win a national championship. He sprained his wrist, so hopefully he's back healthy because, you know, it's my pick. You know, I, I need <laughs> them to win. So. <laughs> well. But uh, also, sorry, Joel Lenardi also said that teams – from the middle of the road teams, seeds four to ten is the deepest ever yep. in this yeah. tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So Absolutely. don't be surprised, actually, if you do see a lot of upsets in this tournament. Yeah, yeah. well, you heard the experts' picks, and uh, you could catch up. The six-man report was able to catch up with Dylan Cormier. Our very own Lauren Beno was uh, caught up with him yesterday, and Brendan was able to talk to Eric Etherly, and I was able to have an exclusive interview with Patsos. And those are all on greatcom.tv, so go check those out. They're great interviews, and you know you get a, a little inside look at what Patsos is, is Coach Patsos is planning for the for the tournament. And mm -hmm. Eric and, and Dylan, you know, they have nothing but 100% belief that they can pull this upset off. So definitely check those out and support our boys. You know, if you're going out to the game, congratulations for winning the lottery. You know, it's going to be an exciting game, and uh, you know, go Greyhounds. Any, anything you guys want to add? I think playing Kentucky and St. Bonaventure helped them for a tournament. Absolutely. Yeah. Played two great big men in Sollinger and Nicholson, so maybe they'll pull it off. I think that they have a good shot at pulling off. They just need to play well, play as a team. Go Greyhounds. We'll see you next week, Loyola.